online and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW. And the way they made it sound like everything was going to be good. You know, everything's perfect. We're going to take care of you. I should have took my time. Veterans in Minnesota have been the target of questionable loans that take away their hard-earned benefits. They're called pension loans or sometimes pension advancements. Clint DeRose tells us about one man who found himself stuck in the middle of a particularly nasty financial commitment. Francis Johnson of Fergus Falls was an artilleryman in the Marines during the Vietnam War, where he became afflicted with depression, PTSD, and medical problems that dog him to this day. Even with his pension, he was having some financial trouble in December of 2015. I had a couple bills I wanted to pay off, and I'd like to have a little money for Christmas. So Johnson looked online for a company that would give him a loan that he could work with. He came across Future Income Payments, which offered to loan him $5,000 if he signed a contract online and agreed to pay $334 a month. So I just briefly looked it over. I was, you know, I was dumb. I didn't read anything, and I signed it and closed it out, and they said I would have my money in seven days. Well, seven days went by, no money. The real problem started when he finally, after months of waiting, did get the money. It hit me like a, like an anvil on the head, 10 years. Yeah, I look, I look at that payment every month, and I kick myself in the rear end for signing that contract. For his $5,000 loan, he was being forced to pay close to $40,000 over a decade. Because of the struggle for veterans like Johnson, the Minnesota Attorney General is suing future income payments of Delaware and Nevada, accusing them of issuing illegal loans with interest rates as high as 200%. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that Johnson can stop making payments. He has to continue until there's more action in the courts. Johnson's advice for those considering pension loans from any company? Don't do it. It's a scam. A message he hopes will save veterans like him from unneeded heartache. In Fergus Falls, Clint DeRose, Valley News Live. Johnson adds that even with all the payments that he's doing all right and can take care of himself. For more information on this pension loan company and how you can report suspicious loans, click on this story on our website at valleynewslive.com. Now, coming up after the weather, kids get school clothes, which in turn eases the financial burden for their parents, all thanks to a local nonprofit. Plus, more than a dozen are dead, and the search continues for the driver of a van that slammed into a crowd in Barcelona. But first, let's find out from Robert Hahn if there's any rain in tonight's forecast. Robert? Yeah, Mike, it looks like we will see some rain before the sun rises again. A live look outside on the CorbinAuto.com Valley Skycam. Part of the Storm Team Skycam Network, the sun set about a half hour ago. And we do have some storms out in the western portions of the state. Some of those will make their way across the state as we head through the next several hours. 66 here in Fargo. Winds out of the east and northeast at 3 miles per hour. Those winds will stay light as we head through tonight. Temperatures mostly in the 60s out there. 66 in Langdon, 66 Valley City, also 66 in the Gwinner area, 68 Detroit Lakes, Thief River Falls, and 62 the cool spots in Bidette as well as in Bemidji. Winds again light. They're going to stay light until we start seeing some showers and some thunderstorms. You could see some gusty winds in and around those showers and storms very late tonight and early tomorrow morning. Not many uh, clouds out there right now, but clouds increasing from west to east tonight. And if you can avoid the clouds, a pretty decent shot at northern lights tonight. So if you are out and about later on tonight or tomorrow morning, take a gander off towards the north if you can avoid those clouds. Starting to see some showers and thunderstorms developing down in South Dakota. These storms will stay south of us. More storms just to the west of Benson County. These are going to slide off towards the east and even more storms off towards the west. Did have do have one severe thunderstorm just east of the uh, Williston area. Not anticipating much in the way of severe weather overnight tonight, but could see one or two strong storms, the strongest of storms off to our south. A lot of lightning down in South Dakota. Across the national map, some showers and thunderstorms down in the parts of the Rockies and Southern Plains. A new severe thunderstorm warning in western Kansas and off towards the east. Some showers and storms making their way through the Tennessee and Ohio Valley and into the northeastern U.S. For us, as we head through the overnight hours tonight, We'll be quiet to start off with, and again, chance for northern lights once we can avoid the clouds. And then the clouds roll in. The chance for some showers and storms increases as we head towards tomorrow morning. And by 730 tomorrow, a line of storms up and down the Red River. 
snows will continue to slide off towards the east and may see some redevelopment in the southern portions of the valley. One or two of those storms could be strong later on tomorrow afternoon. Otherwise, a warm day. High temperatures in the 70s, even a few low 80s across the west. And by tomorrow evening, cooling it back down into the 60s. Here in Fargo, we start off the day with a chance for some showers, maybe some rumbles of thunder and temperatures in the upper 50s by lunchtime. Decreasing rain chance, but still maybe an isolated shower or storm temperatures in the mid 70s and then start to see more and more sunshine as they were on and highs in the upper 70s. Picture of the day. Thanks to Chrissy for sending this in an East Silent Lake sunset in Dent, Minnesota. Can use that as the backdrop to our seven day forecast. That chance for showers and storms tomorrow, especially the southern portions of the valley later on in the day. Hot and dry on Saturday. Chance for storms late Sunday and early Monday. And some of those clouds may unfortunately impact those uh, hoping to see the eclipse, but we'll continue to fine tune that forecast as we head through the weekend. Part those clouds. Can you work on we'll it? We'll do our best. All right. Thanks, Robert. You got it. Residents continue to clean up after heavy storms swept through parts of Minnesota last night. Officials say at least three tornadoes reportedly touched down, but there could be as many as six. In Sibley County, which is southwest of the Twin Cities, several structures were damaged on a farm. The family home was relatively untouched except for a few broken windows. No one was hurt, including the farm animals, after the family says four cows were picked up and thrown into the trees. The National Weather Service has said that they are on the scene assessing the damage. We now know the name of a man whose body was found in a vehicle submerged in water near Streeter, North Dakota. Investigators say the body of 25-year-old Garrick Bonnet of Streeter was discovered yesterday along a stretch of gravel road west of town. An autopsy is being done to determine the exact cause of death. A man has been sentenced to seven years in prison for leaving the scene of an accident involving a dead body. Timothy Barr of Lakeville, Minnesota, was also facing manslaughter charges here in Cass County in connection with the disappearance of a Twin Cities woman. Court documents say Ramsey County authorities talked with several people who knew Barr, and they said that Barr had accidentally backed over Michelle Newell. Barr also said she tried hiding from him under the car because she had stolen a pound of meth from him and hid it in the woods. Barr told authorities where they could find her body. The charge of manslaughter was dismissed. OSHA has fined Custom Auto Truck and Shine Incorporated more than $12,500 for what it calls a serious violation of workplace safety. The fine comes after an accident that killed 41-year-old Nathan Martinson of Fargo. Martinson was pinned between two trucks when a co-worker backed into him in February. He later died at the hospital. An OSHA director told Valley News Live the company has 15 working days to appeal the fine or attempt to reach a settlement for a lesser fine. Two men are in jail after a cocaine bust in northern Minnesota turned out more than 100 grams of coke. 20-year-old Shea Terrell Yaklich and 21-year-old Brandon Curtis are facing a first-degree sale of controlled substance charge. A statement from the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office says the two were arrested after an investigation that spanned between the Leech Lake Reservation to the Beltrami County Bemidji area. Authorities say agents made multiple controlled buys from Terrell Yaklich and Curtis, which led to the seizure of about 73 grams of cocaine. They also executed three search warrants in Beltrami County and found an additional 44 grams of cocaine. The Detroit Lakes Police Department is looking for your help identifying suspects in a theft case. The woman and two men in this picture are persons of interest in an incident that happened July 6th. If you recognize any of these people in these photos, please contact Sergeant Robert Strand. The phone number is on your screen, 218-846. 3204. The kinds of synthetic drugs that people are using are getting stronger. However, the solutions for overdoses aren't keeping up. People who have taken fentanyl and carfentanil need two, sometimes three or four doses of Narcan to be revived. We run reports to see how often we're giving Narcan. Um, there's a lot of misinformation because it's not one dosage per person. You could give up to three dosages for one patient alone. Just because you give them a dose, they become awake, but then they go back down again. You gotta give them another dose, they come up again. Those kinds, um, sometimes they do have to be transported because then they have to be put on a Narcan drip. Paramedics say that so far this year, they've been called out to fewer drug overdoses than last year. 
Students are already moving into houses and dorms in the Fargo-Moorhead area as we quickly approach the start of another fall semester. And it's prompting another warning from Fargo police about a student loan forgiveness scam that's making the rounds, annoying students and parents alike with phone calls. Students on campus tell Valley News Live it's somewhat concerning and that college students might be able to easily recognize fraudulent emails or calls, but they also could be duped as well. They say it's because of wanting to make sure everything is in order before classes start. Yeah, i definitely seen some emails pop up in my inbox that have them, um, but you can definitely tell when you see them that they might be on the you know, sketchier side. The Better Business Bureau advises that you don't pay anything up front if you suspect it's a scam and contact your financial aid office or institution if you have concerns. Getting ready for school usually involves new clothes along with school supplies. That can get expensive, so the local nonprofit YouthWorks hosted its fourth annual We've Got You Covered clothing giveaway to help relieve parents of those costs. Valley News Team's Molly Casey has our story. Clothing is fairly expensive. Each year, families spend hundreds of dollars on back-to-school clothing, but for some, a lot of those trendy new clothes are a bit outside of the budget until the doors of the Agassiz Gym opened. So we have things like winter jackets, we got socks and underwear, we got hoodies, we got things that just are really basic things that you just wish people didn't have to have to worry about. Families from as far as Hinkinson flooded the gyms to fill bags with donated items like pants, shoes, and jackets. But these items meant just a little more. Being that I lost my job two weeks ago. We can get clothes so then I could get my kids haircuts instead. Yeah, financially it helps me out immensely, yes. There were no restrictions on who could attend the giveaway, but for many parents, it was the chance to let their kids choose freely. Normally in a store, I'm going, um, nope, that's like $20. You're not getting a t-shirt for $20. <laughs> I thought it would be a good time for the kids, and it seems like it really is. They're really enjoying themselves. And parents had a message for YouthWorks. Thank you. I appreciate this. You wouldn't believe how much. Thank you very much for holding this event every year. It helps a lot of families. From Fargo, Molly Casey, Valley News Live. Awesome. That was the fourth annual event tonight. We've got you covered event for the Fargo Youth Works location. And volunteers say they hope someday the event won't be needed. There's been a historical discovery at a construction project in Foster County, North Dakota. Now, at first glance, it may not look like much, but when you take a closer look, you see the beauty of what is believed to be a very old stained glass skylight in the Foster County Courthouse Dome in Carrington. When workers removed the plywood covering and cleaned the glass, the light shined through and revealed its true beauty. The folks in Carrington are working on the best ways to showcase the courthouse dome. They're also asking if anyone knows when this was originally covered. If you know anything, get a hold of the courthouse if you have any information.